Hello everybody, my name is Mr Kinsey and I'm a member of the PE department and I'm also a head of year in the sixth form. Um, I'm going to produce a quick video here and talk to you about A-level PE. So the first thing is we're very fortunate at Rawlins to offer two uh, courses at level three in PE. The A-level PE is um, underneath the AQA exam board and we follow that specification. Um, the reason why we really like the course is that a-level PE allows students to play to their strengths. You will get theoretical skills, but you will also develop your practical skills for further education and work. Um, that is a, a direct quotation from the specification, um, but we see that in action every day. One of the exciting parts of the course is that really there are three theoretical components that are very distinct and very diverse. Um, but they also fit alongside a quite challenging coursework component. Um, and as well as that, there is also the requirement to actually film and produce a practical performance. It's important to point out at this time that we're, we're quite rare um, as a PE department in that we're able to offer two courses at level three, which is um, obviously A-level PE, but also the CTEC PE. And I do strongly, strongly recommend that all students um, please go and check the CTEP PE uh, video after this if you've not done so already um, because essentially whilst both courses are quite similar in their content they are assessed differently and it is important to point out that whilst we can offer courses for, for the needs of all students it's important that you're aware of your own strengths and weaknesses and that you follow a course that will allow you to realize your own potential. We do obviously want to quash the, the myth and the snobbery um, around BTEX and CTEX in, in a lot of courses, but also in PE. The, the most important thing is that both A-level and CTEC PE allow all students to get to their end goal. Right, we talked about three distinct components um, of the A-level PE course. These are taught by three teachers, myself, Mr. Giga, and Miss Bardolia. Myself, I cover the vast majority of the scientific-based content, so applied anatomy, physiology, and exercise physiology to start off with. They're very biological-based, and we, we cover content such as the heart, the lungs, the neuromuscular system, movement analysis, and energy systems. In year two, we start to move um, a bit more towards physics with things such as linear and general motion. We look at projectiles. We look at um, a range of different kind of content um, to do with forces, momentum, angular momentum, um, which are really quite interesting and cover a range of sports. So if you're interested in science, that's fantastic. If you're interested in more humanities, social science-based subjects, sport and society, and technology and sport cover a range of sociological theories, but also the role of um, sport within our history. So looking at sport before and after the Industrial Revolution, the importance of elements such as codification and how that has allowed sport to develop and um, be at a stage that is at now. It's also important that we, we look at technology in sports. So we look at things like GPS, Hawkeye, ball tracking, all of these important technological innovations that underpin sport and where it's at today. The final unit relates to um, sports psychology, but also the brain and the mind. So in, in sports psychology, there's lots of interesting topics such as aggression, arousal and anxiety, group dynamics, and motivation. All of these topics underpin the human brain and how the brain actually performs in sport and why sports psychology is such a key part of elite sport in this day and age. For skill acquisition, we actually look at how skills and concepts are learned. So we look at um, mo um, models of memory, but we also look at theories of learning. So that is a really interesting topic if you're interested in any of the social sciences, specifically sports sociology and psychology. Alongside this, performers have to make a practical video and that is in their chosen sport. 
there are not many state school providers that follow A-level PE. Most of the sports are quite traditional and there is a list of sports which can be found on the AQA specification um, page on the website. In the video, performers have to perform um, essentially in a player cam role. The camera will follow them as they complete either their team game, their event or their routine. This is then provided um, alongside the coursework and we send this off via postal moderation. The coursework is a direct response to the practical video and performers have to talk about their weaknesses and use content from the specification to actually design and address um, a chosen method to improve their overall performance. So assessment is important and whilst content is similar to the CTEC in PE, in A-level PE, the exams are loaded at the end of the course. So in the end of year 13, there will be two two hour written exams. Both are worth 105 marks, so 210 marks in total, and it will be 70% of the total course. There are some small sections that require multiple choice and short answers, but in each section, this is probably around a third. We would expect that on the three sections of 35, 23, are in ex or are assessed through extended writing. So students need to be um, quite competent at writing under pressure in exam conditions and making analytical and evaluative comments. The final part of the course, as mentioned earlier, is the NEA, the non-examined assessment. It's worth 90 marks and is 30% of the A-level. 45 marks are provided for the practical performance and 45 marks are through the written coursework. It is very, very important that you are performing at a high level. It's very difficult to get a high mark in A-level PE by just being a recreational player. That's because there are a large number of students that are competing at national or even international level in their chosen sports, and the mark scheme is designed to reflect that. So even county players will not be full marks in A-level PE, whereas they would have been in GCSE PE. So that's a conversation um, that we look at at the start of the course, and it's important that students make a decision that reflects their abilities. Right, this course is for you if you really like sport or you have a passion for a chosen sport in general. It's also for you if you want to immerse yourself in your sport and your concepts um, and actually link them together with the specification. We've already mentioned that competing at a high level is absolutely critical, but if you want to use A-level PE to extend your knowledge and improve your performance, it's really useful to do that as well. If you really enjoy exams and you're highly skilled at producing analytical and evaluative answers, under pressure, this is definitely the course for you. And then finally, if you have ambitions of taking your sport further in a competitive uh, context, or you want to pursue a career in sport, maybe as a teacher, maybe following sports science, maybe looking at a course such as sports physiotherapy or sports therapy, this is a great option for you. So our final expectations, obviously the entry requirements which are detailed below, it's important that you are a strong communicator in terms of um, your English skills. So your English GCSE is important as well as your science performance at GCSE. We also um, have to strongly advocate a high level of practical performance. If you enjoy making links between sports and questioning um, some of the different concepts, then that is also a real key expectation of ours. We want students that are happy to engage and share their opinion and be a role model around site for our younger students. We also know that A-level PE is far more challenging than GCSE PE. So the moment you find things hard, we want you to take responsibility for it. There will be times where A-level PE is really challenging and we need you to show your resilience 
and face challenges head on. Finally, we expect that all students are actively involved in sport at all levels. So it may be that you're performing at a high level in a chosen sport. However, we would expect that you would be involved in PE lessons, volunteering, or involved in house competitions, or involved in our extracurricular program. It's really important that you do that. And for many students who want to leave Rawlins and pursue a career in sport, it's an important part of building your personal statement. Finally, just to kind of conclude, there are a range of enrichment opportunities, certainly during normal times um, within the P department. So we have a proud record of entering our local leagues, but we also, um, on occasions, enter national competitions. And we've had basketball, football and netball teams go quite far in national competitions. If you want to enhance your skills, you can also um, extend your abilities for your personal statement or for your CVs by following any one of the following. Sports Leaders Awards and the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. Both are offered in the house here at Rawlins. There is also the off, uh, opportunity to follow core PE in your enrichment time in year 12. If you enjoy competing in sport, um, that's great as well if you wish to do that. And then the final thing that many of our sixth form PE students follow is volunteering in PE lessons, showcasing your knowledge of your sport, but also improving your communication skills and working with young people. Employers, universities love some of these softer skills that help enhance your wider performance um, in academia. So that concludes everything for A-level PE. If you do have any questions, please feel free to drop, drop me an email in time. Um, I look forward to meeting you in the very near future.